Hey, everybody, Reverend Rob here. Today on Teacher to Exorcist, Laura Van Tyne and I discuss how to build a team of angels and help somebody cross over. Stay tuned. This is Tarot with an Attitude, featuring your host, tarot consultant and spiritual medium, the Reverend Rob Lee. All right, Laura Van Tyne, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Always I mean, a good time. Yeah, this is amazing. Battle with the dark side. My journey from teacher to exorcist. Folks, you're getting an insight right into the book from the author herself. Remember, you are, if you hit the link below and do a pre-sale, she is going to give you an autographed copy. You know, so there you go. Remember that, check out the details below, but this is what spurred our conversation to begin with, and that's what we're doing. So, Miss Laura, you know, you know where we left off last time, and people want to jump right back in, so. Uh, All right, well, I, I was talking, I believe, about how my dad as a ghost was living in our house, and my in-laws who had died were like, never there, and so <laughs> the big question I had was, why? And then, um, you know, the angel must have heard that request or someone did. And my in-law showed up on my patio with two sets of angels. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Because why doesn't my dad have angels with him? My dad's a good guy, right? Right. And um, so anyways, I got a huge lesson that day that at the time I knew it was a big deal. But in hindsight, it was a bigger deal than even what I could have ever imagined. Really? They gave me so much information. They can see potential futures. They can see what is happening and what's going to happen. And so can the dark side. And so this is basically a big chess game between light and dark. And a lot of times I feel like we're just pawns in the game, right? So, but what can we do to take ourselves out of that situation? And the key honestly is angels because everybody has access to angels okay angels are here to serve humanity and they are here to assist us but they have to abide by spiritual law and i think we touched on that last time we did just a little bit yep and so by spiritual law it means that an angel can't force another person to do something so that i get my own way okay right because we all have free will what they can do is they can help guide my words. They can help me make decisions. They can protect me. That's what they can do. And it, while it sounds like it may not be a lot, it is substantial. Here's the other key. The more we ask for their help, the more we connect to God's source energy, the more we grow our spiritual teams. It's okay. literally that simple. This is not a rocket science kind of project. It's that simple. I'm requesting a team of angels to be with my child on, you know, his first day of school to help him feel safe and secure, to help him, you know, make good choices, that kinds of thing. So now let me ask you something on that, because that's, that's like manifesting or whatnot. And everybody's taking that manifesting thing and just turned it into the trash. Yeah. When you say these affirmations or things like that of I am requesting it, it's not like saying grace for the 500th time of a rhyme or a poem. Am I right in saying you need to mean it? You need to picture yeah. it. You need to see the and see it happening so it is real. It, am I in making your any mind's sense eye, here? Right? Yeah, yeah, in okay. your mind's eye. And you can feel it too. So not, okay, everybody has different levels of psychic abilities. Everybody is psychic. We have to understand everyone is psychic. And some people are psycho, but well, never right? mind. Sorry. And we don't want those people to be psychic either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so in psychic ability, it the, the themes and variations of it just vary vastly. And okay. psychic ability is karmically earned. What have we earned through our, our deeds and our actions? Now, it doesn't mean we're here to live a perfect life because that, there'd be no point in that. We're here to learn. There's no learning in perfection. And 
So we have to understand that we can ask these angels. I am requesting that angels be with my son from the minute he leaves the driveway this morning to the minute he comes home. And I want, I'm making the request that those angels assist him in making friends, assist him in doing the right thing, that kind of thing. Now, I'm talking about school age children. I'm not talking about your 32 year old who is, you know, married with two kids of his own. Right. That child is, they got to do the work themselves. Okay. Right. Yeah. So because the child is underneath your tutelage, so to speak, that you're responsible, it gives you spiritual jurisdiction. You can also kind of fall under what I know a lot of the Christians or whatnot, religious, however you want to say it, accountability the age of accountability when they come right. and, and the universe and everything looks on them of, okay, you have the power to make the right decisions or live your own life. And that comes at different ages for different people. But is that kind of what you're talking about where I can ask my angels to guard my 40 year old son. Okay. But it's still going to be incumbent on him to make the correct decisions and do what needs to be done. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right. And I'm going to circle back to that comment because I, 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 while we're while we're preparing for the show, I'm thinking I talk about angels a lot, but what is what are some angel stories that I've never shared before? And this one that I, I'm about to share, honestly, I completely forgot about it until so I started going into my notes from okay. years ago. And so anyways, let me, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that one in a second here. Okay. Because it's such a profound story about the help angels can provide. And so I'm back in my, in my dining room with basically this group of, of angels and dead people. Right. right. And um, <laughs> I'm like, wow, man, talk about a round table. <laughs> so anyways, literally they sat me down and the angels are telling me, Angels are an important aspect of humanity. They're here to assist us, but you have okay. to ask. They can only, right. they're saying that we can only work with you within the confines of spiritual law. And back then I'm like, spiritual law, you know, what does that really mean? Okay. You know, I didn't Ooh, know what it meant. Which spiritual law? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and basically spiritual law is, think of the concept as above, so below. Okay. Um, I don't have the right to walk into your home and take your TV and leave, right? Correct. Okay, think of it that way. It's just a logic okay. trail. So right. I can't ask the angels to do certain things that violate you or your free will. So if we look at it from that lens, it makes it a little bit easier to understand because there's all these books on spiritual law that are just like really lofty and like, I don't know, long-winded yeah. stuff. Let's just get to the bullet points. You and I are yeah. talking about <laughs> bullet points. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't stick your finger in the light socket. I don't mean no electric. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> don't lick the light socket. <laughs> so they come in and they're like, we have messages for you. And the first message they said was love never dies. It love transcends dimensions. Okay. This came out of their mouths. Now we have to understand that when a loved one dies, the love that I have between me and my dad doesn't go away. It just changes dimensions. I'm not disconnected from my dad. We are multidimensional beings. In the physical realm, I'm disconnected from my dad to a certain degree. Okay. I can no longer have him over for dinner, right? Right. But that love, that connection between us doesn't go away. Christ talks about life everlasting, right? Right. Not death everlasting. That would be like a downer. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. That's all right. I love my, it. My, guy, my guys are always rolling their eyes at me. I'm not gonna. I'm not kidding. I hear you. I've and you know what's funny is I said the same thing. My dad would have complete conniption fits because I would make jokes, and uh, you know about jesus about different things the spiritual and he's like you you have no idea i said you know what i find it hard to believe that jesus walked the earth for 33 years and never passed gas 
There you never, go. As a human, <laughs> be, I said, you know, he didn't want like Thomas. Woo, bro. You know, right. <laughs> tell a joke, <laughs> laugh, yeah. laugh at somebody falling over. You know, so I, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm with you right there. There are so many times I know my angels are like going, oh Christ, here he goes again. <laughs> Christ, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I also feel like Jesus up there going, "Hey, Dad, watch this." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Look, my no hands, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, when you're dealing with such heavy darknesses that I, I always deal with, like I, yeah. I hear stuff that make the angels weep on a daily basis. And you do deal with some heavy stuff. I deal so. with like when I have a client who is a victim of satanic ritual abuse. That's not right. Yeah. I mean, that's heavy stuff. And you have to have the levity and the brevity to like move on with your life. So if I'm dealing with somebody who is a satanic ritual abuse victim and my next client has something else and da, 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 and then I have to go eat dinner with my family, it's like, whew, man, right? Um, I have to like shake it off. Right. So, and I call that detached compassion. So I have to like stop. I, I can I can feel for the person, but I can't go over the waterfall with the person because then I'm no good to them. Correct. It's no different than a first responder going up to a gruesome accident and just start standing there crying all the time, right? Right. That's not helping the victim. Right. Not so, at all. Yeah. And so, you know, I remember I'm sidetracking a little bit. <laughs> I remember one time with one of my kids, I'm driving down the freeway and there's, we, we just like come to a screeching halt in the San Diego freeway. And I look over to my left and I'm like, huh. And my daughter says, wow, mom, a real live dead person. I've never seen one of those before. <laughs> wow. There's a waker when, right? when, when your daughter starts going, I see dead people, you know? Right. <laughs> but that was a real live one. Yeah. <laughs> we did help that soul cross over. Um, it was a motorcycle accident. Oh, and, and yeah. Yeah. So Anyways, back to these angel messages. I'm sitting in my dining room with them and they all of a sudden get really serious and really heavy. And this is an exact quote because I, I like, I'm like, oh God, I got to write this down because I, I don't even know what this means. This is like a big deal to me then. And it still is. The world is getting darker every day and we angels need your service. We need you and humanity to start requesting angelic help. And I'm like, okay. That's wow. big if you think about it in context with what you were talking about of having to abide by spiritual law. So what yeah. I'm hearing you say is angels of the light are wanting to help, but they require kind of like a vampire. I got to ask you to come in. Okay. Yes. And so that was like, I'm like thinking to myself, okay, now this was 20 years ago. Well, not even 20, almost 20 years ago. Let's say it's, we're just going to round up. It's about 20 years ago. The world was so much more, was so much different. 20 years ago, I'm going to sidetrack again. So 20 years ago, we had a mom, neighbor mom across the street who robbed four banks. Okay. Wow. Okay. I know, right? That's a whole different story. And you so probably had the best cookies in town or the best snacks. You know, so <laughs> here's the funny part. So we're like, huh, I wonder what's going on. So I I I am gonna just just kind of a funny story. They actually yeah. turned it into a, a TV show, actually, on uh, I think it was CBS. Um, so I I come home from uh I got turned away from volunteering at the kids' school one day and I come home because the school was on lockdown and my neighbor's outside. She's like, Hey, Laura, what's going on? I'm like, she goes, what's up with the helicopters? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, I just got, I can't, they closed the school down. Everybody's on lockdown. There's some, you know, a woman five foot two who robbed a bank. It could be you for all I know. And it was. <laughs> wow. But I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> so yeah, it was. Um, that's a whole different story, but back to these angels, um, they are talking about, and oh, where I was going with that was 20 years ago, that brought international news to my neighborhood. 
Right. We had news media, news trucks, everything going on. Now, if a child gets raped and murdered, there's no news coverage, right? No, it's as the, no, you're right. If it, it's got to be something well, massive. This is what the angels meant, giving me an insight to a potential future. The world is getting darker every day. Now, with my bank robber neighbor, our streets were full of news media, national, local, international, for almost a full month. That will never happen again. And no. now we've got child ha trafficking and all this other stuff that the news media doesn't cover either. So when the angels said the world is going to get much darker, they weren't kidding. So we have to change our pre-programmed beliefs about angels. And I think we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, ask for their help. Don't be shy. Right. Ask for the mundane because it gives you spiritual practice on how to work with them and how they can work with you. You know, and... I when I'm working with people and I tell them, talk to your guides, talk to your angels, you know, what I try to tell people is like, if you were married to somebody and every day they got up, prepared their meal, left work and never spoke to you. And when they got home, they turned on the TV, but never spoke until there was an emergency, you'd become a little frustrated. That happens a lot. And I think this goes with what you're talking about. And I encourage my audience. I encourage everybody. When you get up in the morning, take a moment and talk regular talk. Whoo, thank God you guys are here today. You right. know, hey, thank you. I know I might've gone to bed last night and I forgot to say thank you, but thank you, you know? And uh, man, glad you're here. And you will feel their presence actually start to get closer and i think you've connected that dot for me Woo, got the goosebumps because in spiritual law i've now invited my team to be closer to me exactly so don't take this lightly and you know who always has the worst time with this guys i'm not gonna talk to myself I'm not, you know, i look <laughs> like an idiot i tell people go in the bathroom make a face in the mirror and like i'm not doing that crap women will do it and they will if I got to deal with somebody getting over an opioid addiction, I'd much rather deal with a female than a male because the female, when they want help, they're like, okay. And I think through taking care of children, you're not afraid to put yourself out there where guys are like, I got to keep this persona. Yeah. yeah. I, anyways, I got off the tangent. I, I agree. But, yeah. But yeah. that applies to working with these angels. Absolutely. And whenever I do work and I, I have a, I'm blessed to have the team I have. Okay. I, I know it's large. I know it's vast and I'm grateful. But every time I work with somebody, I always send them my love and blessings and gratitude for the assistance that they gave me because I can't do this work without them. The same thing for every other person. You can't do your work. You can't do your stuff without their assistance. And the dark side programmed us to think that, well, I shouldn't ask for their help unless it's important, or I shouldn't ask for their help ever because I'm not worthy. So knock that crap off and start asking them, period. Now, here's another angel message that they said. <laughs> they said, you're laughing. And something happened that you don't know about. And I want everybody, you'll be watching this in a couple of weeks or uh, not, probably next week, all right? Um, I just did a five, six minute video about how to regain your power. And a lot of it was like, slow down, listen, forgiveness. But it went right along with everything you just said and that energy. And ironically, I used my angel cards. So, you know, Michael, Ariel, they were there or whatnot. And it talks about strength and it talked about this. Or that. So I don't want to get, don't want to get sidetracked. Everybody go back and look for at last week for a five minute video I did about regaining your power. So this is a big uh, deal to regain your power because when we regain our power, we regain our soul sovereignty. Right. We regain more free will. God gifted us free will. 
But along the way, it gets hijacked here and there, bits and pieces of it. So right. we got, and it's no different than like taking a shower every day or cleaning your house, right? It's it's just stuff that we need to do. Right. So with those angel messages, and this was about an hour long <laughs> session I had with these guys. They said, death is never permanent, but it's critical that all souls cross over and go home. And then I heard this loud, booming noise again, home. And it was so deep. And it was like, um, almost like a low note on an organ, home. And then they said, humans are not to judge where a soul goes upon death. Okay. How many times have we heard, oh, they're a SOB, they deserve to go to hell, right? Or, or there's a special home. place in hell for that guy. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not up to us to judge. No. What we need to do, and this was one of my first big lessons, because at this point in time, I'm still learning how to cross over ghost souls. My dad's still here because I'm not quite sure what to do still. Right. And so knowing that I'm not to judge, I finally, when I finally figured out how to cross them over, and I talk about that in the book. Um, I'm talking about certain stories and it's like, well, you know, this ghost is still here. That ghost is still here. And these dark entities are here. And then all of a sudden click, I can start crossing them over and I'm clearing things. That was okay. a huge aha moment for me. So this lesson that humans are not to judge where a soul should go upon death was momentous because of what we just said about two or three years later, maybe a little bit longer, I really don't remember, um, the world's largest, I'm going to say second largest pedophile ring was exposed and Jeffrey Epstein died. Right. Okay. Now there's all these conspiracy theories like, oh, he didn't die and this and that. And that. Yeah, I'm in that court, but uh, okay. But well, it's still I went after him. So Jeffrey Epstein has a spiritual team too. Not just you and I, but your team and my team and everybody out there listening, our, their, our teams are probably not pitching for the same side that Jeffrey Epstein is, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I went after him and his team. And it took me so much time. I swear I almost killed myself, but I went over and over and over like removing layer after layer after layer of just dark entity after dark entity after dark entity. And it was like, holy cow. I'm also rescuing a lot of children. So there's a lot of survivors. But what happens is when a, especially a child or a young sex victim who is put in the system, they only get utilized so much and then they're killed. And then they're killed. This is going to be, uh, sounds awful, but it's true. They are sold to be killed, meaning that person who buys them can do whatever they want. And they're allowed to kill them. This is some of the darknesses that I learned by cleaning up and crossing over dead children. And and let me, let me go in there because people need to realize, you know, that sounds very, you know, to the average person, they'll be like, oh, here we go, you know? Mm -hmm. As a police officer, as ex-law enforcement, I need people to realize one of the most dangerous days for young children in this world for sex trafficking is Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. So many foreign people, they book up for miles and miles, every hotel, things like that. There's so many people converging on site and we never hear about it, but we used to always get notices. This one went missing. This one went missing. This one. And you don't hear about it anymore. Yeah. You, you know, because and I think my personal opinion is by announcing that this is one of the most unsafe places due to sex trafficking is the capitalism, the, the money end of it is like, we're not going to kind of like Disney. Nobody dies at Disney, you know, and that's fairly true because they have their own EMS and things like that. They will move them off 
the grounds before they allow the doctor or whoever to declare. So nothing's ever said on Disney property. Um, so this is one of the things that people do need to realize. This thing is huge. Okay. And I don't want to get off on this tangent of it, but one of the things that Laura said about them, you got to remember when you successfully remove a child from one country to another, that child is no longer existent to a yeah. lot of us in the U S and it literally becomes property. And we hear about people killing people in other countries. Oh, they're trash. They're disposed. They've been used up, get rid of them. And you never know where they're going to go. So are they all killed? No, but at the same point, are they being killed? Absolutely. So I don't want somebody to discount that because okay. I don't think people truly realize once you're out of the confines of this country and we have no way to track or, and you're completely lost, you are a piece of property. Nobody knows to look for you, right? Nope. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. And I know we kind of went on a little side tangent thing, but it's important to understand that that line of philosophy goes back to those messages that I got about the world becoming a darker place. Yeah. We have the power to overturn it, but knowledge is power. We have to know, which is why I wrote this book, which is why I wrote these other books, is to give people their power back, period. Right. You don't make money selling books, okay? <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but you can give people information that can assist them to take their power back. Correct. All right. The other angel message was they said, when God says, in my house, there are many mansions, he means it for a reason. There are many places that we can send somebody like Jeffrey Epstein to versus, you know, or, you know, you or I or whomever. And he, they said that you have to understand that angels are here to protect you. But you have to ask. The more you ask, the more protection. So if I am in the northern tundra in Canada and I go outside in my shorts and T-shirt, I'm only a little protected, right? right? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, so we have to work on building layers of protection. Keep working with the angel. It's one of the best things that we can do. We have to break these chains. The angels connect us to the higher realms. They become a part of our spiritual team and they offer us spiritual service. One of the biggest forms of spiritual service is learning how to cross over the dead, period. Okay. And we all can do it. All we have to do is ask the angels to come in and take them back home to the appropriate realm right now. It's not Can rocket. that person refuse to go? Yes. However, they are no longer in a physical body and they no longer have the karmic... Um, I want to say they no longer have the karma to be here. They have to go home. So when they are stuck, when they say, I'm not leaving, I'm in this other dimension, you as a ghost, let's pretend you're dead. You come to me and you're bugging me. You're violating my free will. Okay. Whether I want you to come to me or not, the purpose of your death was so I can learn how to live life without you. The purpose of your death is to go home so that you can be of higher service. Ghost energy is very low frequency. People who have had haunted homes know that everything breaks in a haunted home. The plumbing, the electric, the cars, the this, the that. You're always replacing stuff. Why? Because ghost energy is low energy. And it will come and start breaking stuff. And then it also attracts the rats of the unseen world. Those dark entities and demons. Okay. So we need to cross them over. And so there's let me, ask, let me ask you a question because you just gave me food for thought, as you always do. Um, so when I'm talking to somebody and they're like, my dad is here to protect me. He will never leave me. Can a ghost actually offer protection? Not really. Okay, that's kind of where I thought we were going. Not really. Um, Woo, going to be a lot of pissed off what? people out there, I, I, Mike. You know, 
Yeah. I gotta I gotta bat cock a scary story for next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Okay. I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take a little bit of note. Um where my dad was soul napped right okay. in front of my eyes. Right in front of my eyes. So that's kind of a little teaser for next time. But I want to share a story. We talked about spiritual jurisdiction, right? Yeah. So as we're doing, as I'm kind of preparing for the show, I'm thinking, what is an angel story I haven't shared? And I'm kind of going through my notes. And I think I mentioned this. I don't remember if I mentioned it on air or off air. But I like, oh, my gosh, I completely forgot about this story. And it was such a profound story. So I have somebody reach out to me. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, on a social story. media place that says, can you help me? I'm terrified for my son and his platoon. Okay. And I said, I don't know. Let's have a conversation. So, you know, I gave him my number. We started talking. His son and his, and it was a small part of the platoon or small part of his team were in, I want to say it was Afghanistan, and they were about ready to um, remove some hostages from the Taliban. Right. He says, can you protect them? He says, I feel like they're going to get ambushed. And so I thought about it. I listened and I said, here's what we're going to do. My tax dollars pay for this military service, right? Right. These guys... And I truly believed it. I don't think all military operations are above board on any side of the fence, okay? Right. But these guys are good guys. These guys are are SEALs, basically. SEALs or Marines, or I can't really remember. And he was right. They were going to get ambushed because my team is showing me they will get ambushed. And so I created this huge cloak of angels. And I gave them the instructions to remove bullets coming their way and i didn't know if it worked so a few days later when the mission was over i get this um call from that the picture you sent picture so go ahead and pull up the picture okay so i get this um call from from the dad and he says you're not gonna believe this my kid was shot and the bullet missed him. It burned his skin. Wow. That can be the power of angels. Okay. This also told me that the higher realms knew that this mission was for the greater good of humanity. Okay. So if I were on the Taliban side of things, would the angels have helped them like this i don't think so okay because we know a lot about this and i don't want to be too judgy but no i hear you um there's a lot of cruelty and um cognitive dissonance that goes along with what these terrorists do and so this guy ended up getting grazed by a bullet nobody was harmed in this rescue mission and it was a success So that kind of goes back to, I don't want people to get confused. And I think I need to say this to get it right in my head. You know, earlier we said we can't have basically an angel. We can't order an angel to interfere with another adult. It's up to that person. Right. But in this situation, two things could have happened. That person could also be in that God keep me safe mode, Mm -hmm. you know, and you didn't ask them to do anything to or with that person. You asked them to move inanimate objects out of the way. So therefore their involvement did not violate spiritual law. It didn't. And also as a taxpayer, I'm funding that mission. Okay. Which does give me spiritual jurisdiction. Okay. As a taxpayer... I can clear my kid's school of dark entities. Okay. Because I'm affording for that building to exist by my tax dollars. You have a vested interest in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, gotcha. Can I do this to a school in South America? No. 
but my taxpayer dollars do give me some spiritual jurisdiction to help this. And if my kid is in that school at the same time, right? Gotcha. So yeah, that was quite a profound story about angels and bullets, right? Talk about an A-B testing. <laughs> right. No kidding. Yeah. So they can help us. So I encourage everybody to start utilizing their angels vet them, pour salt on them, pour frankincense oil on them, learn how to increase your spiritual tool belt because we need to shift, shift this. Okay. All right. And that makes sense because again, I remember, you know, going back to what you're talking about with, you know, it brought national news into your neighborhood. Yeah. I lived in a little town of Melbourne beach. You know, we were a little beach community in Brevard County, you know, and when there was a murder or something that actually finally happened and the national, even the, the local news out of Orlando finally said, and happening tonight in Melbourne. You're right. Even as a kid, the next day we were all, we were on the news. Melbourne was on the news, right. you know, because, <laughs> because a lot of us did grow up in that bubble because of the way society was back then. And now there are correspondents assigned to almost every municipality. You've got this district, you've got that district, because it's going on everywhere. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm in full agreement with you that things are, you know, darkness is happening. It doesn't mean, even the Bible talks about when Armageddon, things are going to get, you know, but the Bible says things are going to get better before they get worse, okay? But at the end, all is good, okay? Now, I know I just gave a whole Beyond Reader's Digest version of the tribulation, the apocalypse, blah, 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 blah. But one of the things to remember is yes, but you can summon light around you and you don't have to live within that darkness unless you choose to. And I think we talked about that last time about people choosing to stay in that dark negativity because that's become their sole focus. And we can shift it. If I feel like I'm living in a dark negative space, I have to work to get out of it. And that's okay. It's always doable. Right. Always doable. Absolutely. So next week, you said you got another story for us. No, We're going to continue do. on with the Laura Van Tine. I, you know, so about the time I have my 80th birthday, we'll we'll be able to, you know, uh, end the story or whatnot. Because I know people are wanting to hear. Okay, we're hearing all this stuff that's going on, but they want to progress the story. Hang in there with us, folks, because we're going to talk about things that come up that people need to hear, and and this is one of those things that Laura and I do. When we talk, they it's kind of like, wow. So uh, Absolutely. And the stories that I'm sharing actually today and even next week are not necessarily in the book. So this is an addition to what's in the book. Da, da, da. So there you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Laura, it, it, it's great. Can you give us a hint of what you're going to talk about next week with the story? Even just like... A, oh. My dad died. He didn't cross over right away and he was trying to protect us, but it didn't go well. Oh, okay. Wow. And it All right, one everybody. Of the most terrifying moments of my life. Wow. Okay. So, everybody, next week. All right. You better be here. I know I Very will. Good. Okay. So, and let's, again, I want to do this one more time. Battle with the Dark Side, My Journey from Teacher to Exorcist by my friend and the lovely Miss Laura Van Tyne. You know, you can find a lot of the stuff. There's stuff she's talking about here that's not in the book. She just said that. But there are stories that she's going to talk about that are in this book and be able to get to the other side. So the other thing I'd like for you to do, get the book, do the pre-sales. But if you have questions something you want clarification on, or just, hey, what happened in this situation? Put them in the comments. We'll check them out. I keep looking. 
I'm not the best at responding. I'm getting better. Okay. And some of you will know I did respond to your comments and at least say thank you. But I'd like to have the questions so we know what y'all want to hear. Okay. And it also gives us guidance in helping people prepare. So, you know, there we are. Ms. Laura, anything before we go? No, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And I want to thank everybody who's listening because I know we have so many options of what we get to do with our time. So I appreciate everybody listening. Absolutely. And with all that being said, the love of Miss Laura Van Tyne, myself, take what you want. Leave what you don't, but leave having experienced a little peace, love, and light. Bang around. This is Tarot with an Attitude, featuring your host, tarot consultant and spiritual medium, the Reverend Rob Lee.